Alright, so I decided I would make an update video about what's going on right now and why I'm working on Chain Playground again. So the reason I'm working on this game again is because a few days ago, on a whim, I decided to check on Chain Playground to look and see if any new levels had been uploaded. And um, as you've seen in the last video that I made, some new ones have been uploaded. Um, it's been over a year ago now. But that's just because I very rarely check this. I stopped checking it as frequently because I was pretty sure no one was ever going to upload any new levels. But seeing these new levels and seeing the really cool ones, especially the one that I really liked, Prison Break, um, I decided to make a video of myself playing these levels. And that also inspired me to work on the game again, which is what I'm doing. And I'm currently working on the 0.5.0 update. Now, the 0.5.0 update is going to be a pretty big update, all things considered. I have some pretty cool plans for it, but it's currently being released in stages, and I'm calling these stages pre-releases. They are basically some peeks at what my current progress is whenever I get it to a state that is playable. And that was not my original plan, and here is why that happened. As soon as I started working on it, and I mean literally as soon as I started working on it, a friend of mine was playtesting it while we were on the phone, and together we kind of found the worst bug that I have seen in this game. It's a, I considered it a security issue. I mean, no one's passwords or anything are at stake because their passwords aren't associated with anything on here. But it was actually the user content that was at stake. Specifically, it was a bug that allowed you to delete anybody's level. And the way it worked is you'd pick the username of someone who's uploaded a level that you wanted to delete. Or better yet, you could just put in my username. And what would happen is if you put in my username or anyone's username and tried to log in, you didn't even have to put in a valid password. Just as long as there was an attempt, um, when it saw that username and it saw levels that match that username, it would give you the ability to delete that level. Or if it was my username, it would give you the ability to delete every level. And I don't know how no one found that before. I mean, there's always the chance that they did, and that's why there haven't been so many levels, but I, I choose to think that is not what happened. But yeah, this was a really serious bug. And whenever a bug like this happens, what I have to do is terminate access to the internet for previous versions. And it's not actually internet access, it's access to Game Jolt's game API, which um, is used for things like achievements and cloud storage of user data. And I use it to store the levels that people create. And so by terminating the access to that for previous versions, I can basically prevent them from being used for exploits that were in that version at the, you know, at the cost of those versions not being able to be used for online play anymore. But the thing is, this happened at an interesting time. It happened at the very beginning of this new update, which means that immediately the previous version that was already out had to have its access terminated, and the new version would have to be the one where internet access would come back. And since I planned on this being a really big update, that would normally mean a really long wait, and I did not want that. What I decided to do at that moment was to release the update in stages. First priority was getting internet access back after I fixed that bug. And that happened pretty quickly, but unfortunately, I was in the middle of overhauling the level editor. Not like adding any new features or anything, but refactoring it. That is, changing its code, like how its code is actually written, without changing its functionality. And that was desperately needed because the code was atrocious. It was before I kind of realized how useful it is to write custom classes instead of putting everything in the update function and controlling the state of the entire level editor with a single integer. Not lying, that's the state 
that was the state of the level editor's code. So, um, that took a few steps, a few pre-releases to get finally working. And, oops, that's not the button I wanted. And now by 0.5.0 pre-4, the level editor is back in action again. It's working again. It's back to the point that it was originally at with the addition of a grid. And that's about the only thing that's changed. Which means it's now time for me to work on the features that I actually want. The first of which being the ability to change where the player starts the level. And that works fine. Um, but it's not complete. I actually need this to be saved with the level. Um, and I'm going to get to why that's a problem in a moment. But first, an overview of what I am hoping to have done when 0.5.0 releases. Improved squishing physics. The squishing physics are weird and glitchy right now. Moving platforms are also weird and glitchy right now, but it's not as noticeable. A grid. I already, I already did that, actually. Highlight pieces when they are hovered over. That took a lot of takes for some reason. Um, highlight pieces when they are selected. Add connectivity icon with upload and download indicators and progress bars. That's kind of more of a visual thing, but I feel like it would be nice to have some confirmation of what's going on. Ability to hide tooltips. That was suggested by a playtester. Sort levels by popularity. Um, that is definitely necessary because alphabetically is not a very useful thing to sort by. Um, add ability to choose where the player starts the level. That's what I'm working on. And these are ideas. These are things I want, but they're not promises. Logic boxes. If you saw my previous video, you saw that someone found a way to make logic gates with the currently existing um, level assets. And that was cool, and I thought, what if that was just a built-in feature? And you connected nodes to them, and they worked, you know, like logic gates. So that's an idea. And themed level backgrounds. Currently, dungeon is what I would call the current theme. And there'd be other ones like desert, forest, and ocean. Maybe more, but the thing about this is, this is art and texturing and modeling. All things that I'm not very good at, so that's why these are not promises. They're just ideas. But yeah, that that's the game plan for this update. Now for why this is a problem. So, I realize it's actually been over a year since the last time that I actually worked on the code of this game. And that's a problem for several reasons, one of which being, um, if you remember me mentioning earlier, the code in certain places is atrocious since I had a completely different coding style, or rather a lack thereof, back then. And the somehow, the save system, the save saving and loading levels system, was not affected quite as badly. I somehow didn't screw that up. Exactly. The code is really good. I happen to make a format that is extensible, and has some backwards compatibility going for it, but it's a little bit broken. And I would go into detail about how, but instead I'll leave that for another I'll leave that for another video. What I will say is it somehow works, but I don't understand how. Anyway, thanks for watching. I will keep you updated as new developments arise, and that's about it. Bye.